Matt, you did have a funny joke about uh, the Patriots Super Bowl victory made white America so happy that they digitally altered the uh, Dr. Dre's kid into a white guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can finally watch this show. Wait, I wasn't going to watch it, but now I can watch it. The protagonist of the new 24 is Dr. Dre from Straight Outta Compton? Yeah, yes. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, his, that's his son, yeah. right? Oh, okay. That's his actual son. No, I know that the guy that played Ice Cube was his son. Oh, so it isn't. I don't know if he, that's Dr. See, Dre's I didn't son. see that movie. I didn't see that movie, even though it has my boy Giamatti in it. It was good. I, it was good. Yeah, I it was long, it. but it was good. Uh, it, it was his role. I, it's, it definitely is Cube's actual son. I don't think it's Dre's actual son. What, what was, I don't what think was, it is. What was Giamatti's uh, character uh, called in the, in the credits? A scheming Jew? Was that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jerry Heller. <laughs> I know, but I mean, did he ever like do the hand? That's a pretty scheming pretty much. name. Yeah, Jerry Heller. Like, yeah. did he do the hand gesture? Well, famously oh, on, a, on You a, know who I saw today? Who I had lunch with today? Who? Uh, ben Fogel. Who's that, Jared Fogel's brother? <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was no, but remember you met him? He's also South African. Oh, and you, that and you guy. Tested yeah. 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 I'll meet the South African. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you tested out your accent on him for like approval? Yeah, well, I lived there when I was a kid. I know, but I thought it was funny that you were like, please validate my childhood oh, accent. I, I, yeah, I'm really obnoxious whenever I meet another South African, especially a South African Jew. Yeah. yeah you get, you, you just, just watch Lethal Weapon and you've got the lighters going. Lethal Weapon light. 2. I know. Yeah, we Lethal Weapon 2. I to, totally forgot. I just yeah, look, read, look, look at the room. I just <laughs> read it. That's why I my South African accent. It's a really I, difficult accent. There it's one of the hardest thongs. ones. You can't do it. I li- yeah. A lot of pure vowels. It's like you try to start with New Zealand and then you pretend you had a stroke. <laughs> I like uh, the Leo's version of it in the Blood Diamond. Blank. It's not the bing bing. It's the it's blank blank. Blank blank. Yeah. In America, it's bling bling. <laughs> in Africa, it's bang bang. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it, it is a, his is much softer though. He has actually a very pleasant South African accent. Leo it can be kind of no no no. no. Ben's. Yeah, Dr. Dre's ben straight out of yeah. not actually Dr. Dre's not son. Not Dr. Dre's son. <laughs> right, okay. You thought they were all their kids, <laughs> yeah. including Easy E's <laughs> uh, out of pocket kid. <laughs> They did like they did like a they did they did like a mass DNAing of like bastard kids in southern Los I Angeles was, to find uh, Easy E's kid. NWA, the next generation. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that's what the M in Muppet stands for. I'm just trying to find these fucking dumbass articles again. I did. Uh, I watched Being There also. Oh, this is this more, week. Part, more part of your homework. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's well, not part of my homework. That was just something I did this <laughs> week. Uh yeah. All right. I mean, I used to say it was the Bush movie, but now it's now it's the Trump movie, right? Is that what everyone's saying? Yeah, like just <laughs> that's just a, a smart a mentally take. handicapped person blundering around and people ascribing meaning to his meaningless gibberish. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think it is more appropriate for Trump because all of Bush's non extemporaneous talk, that was always, you know, well crafted stuff from GOP think tanks like the that he heart fucked of, up terribly the, uh, the heart of establishment conservatism Trump is literally just rambling yeah. gibberish yeah, yeah yeah like he had yeah, the thing today where he with, said with Bush it was like a game of telephone that he wasn't very exactly. good at but the actual information yes he was he was like a transmitter for a coherent thing he is just gibberish it's just it's like it's like a computer that's winding down I mean did you see today where he's in front of the troops or something and he's going He's like, I, I, I understand things. I, I, I'm one of the best people in the world at processing information and understanding things. I mean, oh yes, please. Like, it's like he spent ten minutes defending his ability to think, which yeah. you should probably not have to do as president. Yeah, that's protesting a little too it's much. Protesting way too much. I'm smart. Yeah, it's, well, yeah, that's the Fredo thing. I'm smart. Like they say. Wait a second. Oh my god! Oh, too many people. Uh, he is points, uh, so the Fredo. Get, get, get down, he's Fredo as hell. Get down over here. Didn't oh, it sorry. recently sorry. come out that like that like the whole narrative about Cheney being like the evil emperor and stuff is like sort of bullshit, and that Bush was kind of thought he was the decider and wasn't listening to Scowcroft and fucking probably way, way more Baker so in the shit. second Bush administration. But really? I think Cheney was pretty much in the driver's yeah, seat. Yeah, the for second the, term, I think it's in the first one. In the first term, he was because you know Bush kind of was way over his head. 
But I do think we're slightly comforted by that narrative that we're like, oh, this flailing idiot couldn't be in charge for real. It yeah. has to be like. Well, we're the, doing it now evil. with Bannon. Too. Yeah, with, yeah. Are we, they're projecting yeah, all the like, same well, who's thing the on real? Bannon. And it's like, yeah. what? How is that better? Yeah, it really like, is because it doesn't matter in any. No, it doesn't sense. matter. I mean, but the thing is, is that is that yeah, Cheney got I mean, sort of pushed out in the second term. Uh, because I think his ego got bruised. Like, I'm the president here, which is a process that I think is happening with Trump, but like on a super fast time scale. Yeah. Whereas, like, I think in two weeks, if he sees one more headline of Bannon being the brains, he's like, he's out of here. No, it's a good I, attack. I'm, I'm, the yeah. one. I'm the president. I mean, like, look at the two personalities between Trump and Bannon. You can't have two obese rich guys occupy the same space. Like, it sounds like I'm joking, but it's serious. Like, they are going to fall out. They just come in the room so- bringing in bigger and bigger cigars. Yeah. Every they- meeting, by the end of it, they're just like holding like a fucking like, you know, Yugo sized cigar. And it's just like this extended phallic symbol. They're just ma- they're making un uh, like un just uninterrupted uh, eye contact across the room shitting yeah. while eating party <laughs> subs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I absolutely, yeah. I, I totally believe that they they are going to butt heads sooner, if not later. It's a good line of attack because it like goes against Trump's ego, right? That, yeah, like, well, that's the thing. The, like, this is a deal where traditionally you would say it doesn't matter. You have centers of power and where <laughs> ideology is flowing from. But we really are in a new era, and one of the things about it is is that there is no guiding ideology or interest group yeah. that has like a pervading power it is one man's misfiring dying brain yeah <laughs> <laughs> and 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 he's he, he's he's easily shook yeah oh god so rattled i i don't think it will actually um you know benefit us in any way no no we're doomed no matter uh, what yeah it'll but be entertaining it is fun and also it will destabilize them a little bit you know they he can't keep a you know a solid collection of people around him uh it's, it's worth trolling him i mean yeah he's it's like this is the only politician where mean tweets actually do yeah. affect him. This is and the first trollable president. And Did look, you I mean, see that state he senator is a troll today? and he is yeah, the, mad online. It's true. The state senator who is like, listen, you epic cock monkey shit fucker. <laughs> <laughs> he like did a bunch of Reddit insults. But I, I was, I mean, like, look at the, I was going to go back a little bit. I mean, look at the process of how he does things. In the previous administration on this time, when we were conducting operations in Yemen, it would be Obama with like Susan Rice and people who are also pieces of shit. But there would be like this process to evaluate, like, you know, which 16 year old are we going to fucking blow up? But with Trump, he's like eating McDonald's with Jared and yeah. some other fucking shithead. Watch, he's like, the TV is on a full blast. Yeah. I can't even talk he's over with, it. He's, he's watching like fucking, yeah. yeah uh, he's with watching, Mon- he's fucking watching Montel Williams. He's watching Montel or E with Jared. He's like, you know, I uh, I tried to fuck uh, Judy fucking whatever <laughs> from Entourage, but she wasn't going, you know? Okay. I tried to buy an ottoman with her. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just can't let him open up. And Jared is just accidentally spilling salt everywhere. And this is the circumstance in which they're like, yeah, let's send in 50 Navy SEALs into a compound. And they ended up getting like 30 yeah. fucking people killed. Yeah, and they got 10 year old documents yeah. that are absolutely worthless. Yeah, that little girl was really cute. Yeah. 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 The, the Dude, funny, way to pick like just like the absolute worst little girl to kill. The worst. I mean, they could have picked bow, a far bow. less cute little girl to murder. But because of how fucked up that operation was, like Yemen has withdrawn permission for us to operate counter terror ops in there. Like we're still gonna run black ops, but the cost and difficulty of the missions are gonna get much worse. Much more people are gonna get killed. Which makes those Navy SEALs who are running that Trump flag on their fighting vehicle hilarious. Because, yeah. yeah, get us killed. <laughs> he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna order them into the mouth of a active volcano and they're like, God bless you, sir. <laughs> yeah, all right, your commander for this mission is Jared Kushner. <laughs> uh, 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 and signed a uh, Star Command Starfleet Commander? Uh, okay, so you're gonna wanna press Y to get to the vehicle. Uh, to press down on the D pad to switch between friends. Franklin and Michael, uh, hit both sticks for your slow mo ability. I mean, I, I do think it's pretty adorable that you know the four martyrs of Benghazi occupied this huge psychic space on the right for eight year for four years, and this Navy SEAL got killed basically because Obama like thought or uh, Trump thought he was like doing a splinter cell run and yeah. it was real. Uh, 
that that's like fine. It's like that's sacrifice we're willing to make. It's fine yeah, because I, I'll tell you why it's fine. It's because they're on the offense. God damn it! Yeah, they're not yeah, playing yeah. defense and anymore and just want, dying because of people want easy war errors. like in the movies. Yeah, like, that's true. Yeah, that is offense and it wasn't defense. That yeah, is a distinction. We want yeah. we're, we're on we're on the march. Yeah, and and I mean, I think that there is something sort of. I don't want to say it's like you know encouraging, but even like right wingers. They don't like the idea of drone warfare. They at least want it to look like a movie. Yeah. Like, because they're, they're like, this is boring video game nerd shit. It's war for nerds. Yeah. It's about stats. And it's yeah. not about your gut. Yeah. It's not about instinct. I suppose I should officially start the show at this point. <laughs> oh, <but> yo. <laughs> hey. We're, uh, yeah, the this old is, uh, cold this is, open. Yeah, classic. exactly. That's we're, how we we're do keeping it. it loose. We're keeping it loose this episode because our guest... Adam Friedland of Cumtown. What's up? Number one come boy, Adam Friedland. Dicks out for Harambe. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Brendan Wardell, everybody. <laughs> Brendan Wardell. Everyone, we know that Brendan Wardell was your favorite episode, and we're trying to recreate that energy here. <laughs> yeah, it feels so good to walk on, you know, in you know, in the in the footsteps of giants like uh would you have Tim Heidecker this week? Yep. <laughs> and Jeremy Scahill and Wardell and like, oh. <laughs> It feels so, you know, these are, these are the, you know, the minds of, of contemporary society. And, you know, I am definitely one of them. I'm, I'm definitely, you know, uh, you know. It's been a long time coming. A com- uh, really smart uh, come boy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're the one who puts the own in come town. Uh, this oh is your God. opportunity to show that you're not just a pretty come face. Oh, God. <laughs> It's fake though, because like my whole brand is that I'm smart, but I'm actually really stupid. I'm good as I'm good at like convincing someone on the bus that I'm smart, but I'm not good at like actually maintaining intelligence. That's like, the Costanza. Nick Nick and Stav's whole brand is that they're dumb, but they're actually very smart guys. So I think that's sort of the dynamic between Adam, us. I realized Adam. this yesterday though, like. Cumtown is more of a product of red diaper babies than Chapo. Yeah, kinda. What is that red diaper baby? It, it means, means you come uh, from like minutes. radicals or leftists or whatever. But like, so your your parents supposed to apartheid. They kind of suck now, but they're a- MSNBC now. Yeah, but, but they were. My dad sh- yelled yeah. at me yesterday, and then Stop's <laughs> grandmother literally had to like run out of Greece because she's a communist, and they dropped a dime on her. But luckily, uh, apparently, they only sent like the worst Nazis to Greece, and they were really bad at. <laughs> genociding people <laughs> wait adam what did, what did your dad get mad at you about the other day i told him that i'm doing this like my friend's big podcast the it's a politics podcast <laughs> and so then he called me up really pissed off last night and he's like there's two things there are two things that we should be focusing for the resistance and i was like what? oh my god oh god <laughs> so, I was like, oh so god. wait a minute your dad went what from joe it? slovo yeah. to <laughs> keith olbermann basically oh, yeah yeah he's he's fucking he's he's fucking yeah morning joe right now <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's i mean it's we elected a guy that yells at the shots at the television like i wouldn't <laughs> i i wouldn't want my father to be the president <laughs> that's good. he's pretty much the same as that but he believes that yeah he I, he wants he wants us to Get the tax returns, which Trump has said, I won. You're not going to get the tax That's returns. That's the nerdiest You're ass thing. You're not required yeah. to give out the tax and returns. And then to get uh, the, informa- the information on how Russia hacked the election, because that will, then they could get rid of, of uh, Trump. So, Dad, 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 I like said it. I said, I said your thing, but... Uh, yeah, I, and then I was like, "You can't do my homework. I'm fucking 30 years old. You're still trying to, <laughs> you're still trying to write my college essays right now. This is ridiculous." Uh, this guy's like a I, Philip Roth I'd novel. I'd like to d- dedicate this gym to Adam's father. Yeah, shout out, Chapo fans. Got to get the tax returns. Got to get those Russian <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, get it, get it, get it out there. there. <laughs> Spread it. Tweet about it. RT. Make it happen. We Bring gotta it call your congressman. Yet. We gotta call your say senator. Yet to Comrade Putin and his I just teams. like that this is someone who at one point like opposed apartheid when it was dangerous, and now he wears a speedo to the beach and yells about Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Well. Yeah. He. Well. Now. Yeah. But then he's like really mad at Bernie still. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know. He can't watch Curb because it's like watching himself. <laughs> so it just makes it. He just he shouts at the television. He just goes, and then he yells about get tax your, returns. Get, get your life together, man. Get your life together. <laughs> You're a mess. <laughs> so that's Adam. So and then you said Stav's mom had to flee Greece because uh, she was his a red mother. Yeah, his, oh, she his, was his a his red, and okay. like apparently someone ratted her out, and she had to go to 
Bulgaria or some shit, some place worse than Greece. Okay. And uh, and and he said the only saving grace is that apparently the Nazis they deployed to Greece were like the fail Nazis and they were not good at tracking people down. <laughs> and uh, Nick's dad was actually uh, Nikolai Ceausescu. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. In Romania. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Adam, I'm actually, um, you are considered the smart one on Come Down Erroneously. It's I, true. I am, I'm actually the dumbest member of Chapo. We know. Yeah. I know, I've read three books. <laughs> uh, I count Dune as two of them. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. That's fair. And I'm it's responsible, I'm responsible for Adam getting roasted about something because. What after, was that? After the Chapo election night show when everyone was Oh just, no. When we were wandering, I was like, <laughs> I had like $600 from the bar. I was just wandering the street. I was going into CVS to buy like protein powder because I was like. There has to be a bright spot. I at least can have whey protein with the creatine mixed in when I wake up tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, Adam was like, what do we do now? And not even thinking because, like, I had forgotten how shitty she was, like her BJP connection. BJP. Oh, connection. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I mean, I guess we could run fucking Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> Well, you said yeah, you said yeah, Tulsi yeah. Gabbard or Keith Ellison. Or Keith, so you're half... yeah, Keith, I was right about one, but yeah, yeah. I wasn't even like thinking. And Adam, like, who he took, did, well, didn't, he took the ball and ran didn't listen to Chapo closely enough and didn't realize that outside of like maybe two subjects, I don't know anything. <laughs> and like most of my contributions are just one liners that are good but get us yelled at all the time. <laughs> Uh, he was like, yeah, no, I could trust Felix. And then the entire podcast roasted him because Tulsi, uh, Tulsi did Nationalist Tulsi. Team. Well, I, 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 yeah, the, the, the episode, our episode after the election was like, I think maybe one of our most popular ones, although it's like the most off brand, like we're not doing any it was very moving. racial stereotypes. We're not doing any. <laughs> I think actually I shit on Israel a little bit at the end, but, um, self-hating Jew is but a then, stereotype. Yeah, I, 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 I have this mark of shame that I fucking that I'm so ashamed that I advocated for uh, for this modiest uh, <laughs> fucking blood, yeah, <laughs> bloodthirsty like psycho. She's hot though. She's I mean, like exactly. I I honestly it. brought her brought her up because I was like, you know, it's, I I still would though. <laughs> and, uh, I still would though. You know. Um, but whatever, dude. That was the only bad part of the whole thing. <laughs> the whole episode. I've ruined other Come Town episodes much worse. So <laughs> I'll take I'll take that one. <laughs> but uh, yo, that that night was so funny because we I went to the Chapo thing. I remember <laughs> one of my clearest memories of election night was um, we're at the bar and uh, Will just ate a, a weed lollipop and I was, <laughs> I was I was like super high and in sh- you know everyone's in shock. And I look over at Will and just everyone in the bar is like on the verge of tears. And he's like, this is like that picture of France the day after the Nazis <laughs> took over. And all the Nazis and all the French people's faces are just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> That's literally how everyone in that Brooklyn bar no, looks. The, fam- the famous shot of that yeah, one guy. guy just <laughs> 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 really That's what that bar That's felt the like. Cover, by the way. Hell yeah. But, uh, That's the thing I was. Episode. Smoking <laughs> weed. <laughs> <coughs> I, I I drank like a ton of beers. I was totally oh, fine. Oh, yeah. yeah. You shouted you were at, screaming, dude, come you eater. At the the bar. And everyone was, yeah, you were screaming, come eater, and, and almost Podesta. falling over. Wait a minute, what? The stumble out. Yeah, yeah, no, Wait, Podesta, 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 you, wait you know, limping drunk what happened? Happened? Podesta goes up, and he's like, because Hillary's too much oh, of a coward to face her donors. <laughs> no, wait, Podesta goes up, and he's like, it's still very close. We're still, they're still counting. Everyone go home. Please go home. Please. Yeah. <laughs> She's fucking tearing the green room apart. Please go home. And you were like, you you come in, you yeah. child fucker. <laughs> Matt, I, Matt, 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 Matt. I did that? It, well, yeah, you, you did the that. The weird thing was, I was like, shit, we're going to kick t- get kicked out of the bar. But the bartender just kind of looked at him and we're like, you know what? We're all having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, Matt, I, said, I yeah, honestly don't remember You that. didn't just say that. When we all took a cab home, we take a cab home at like fucking 430. <laughs> and you were on the front next yeah, to the poor you, terrified the, cab and, driver. And I was like, I was using my spectrum ability. I was the least distraught. Not because I didn't think it was 
awful. No, but, but you got that. You got that autist focus, which was very helpful. In yeah, a course. combination of autism and my uh, my <laughs> uh, talent as an athlete, which is absurd confidence in the face of. That, you know, I always think I'm going to win. Yeah, Matt and I decided it was the end of the world, and we were going to party. Yeah, joyfully. so I, I was in the car, and I was like, "Hey guys, why don't we get sandwiches? And I'll cheer everybody up." And so I was ordering the sandwiches. You like Marge like, Simpsoning us? I am. Yeah, and I was like, and "So, uh, how about a club sandwich? How about that? Yeah, this place is good." And Matt, like, there's just stony silence, so I just order for everyone. And then after five more minutes of silence, when we finally get to our block, Matt just yells, this is like a fucking grimace was president. <laughs> yo, the, also, when that same conversation where you said Tulsi Gabbard, yo, she's the troops, she's pretty hot. She, <laughs> <laughs> that same conversation, um, there's this, this, this black dude out on the block, like, comes up to us, and he's like, Hey, my man, can I get some money? And you, you're like, you had all that fucking genius like live show money, yeah, yeah. so you handed him like forty dollars. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, oh man, thanks. And then he like, he like daps up the bouncer at the bar we were at. And they're like, oh, are you on this shift? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not working tonight. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he wasn't so homeless. Great. He was just some dude that worked at the bar yeah, that, that we thought was that. I'm not even mad at that. That's no, a great move. Yeah. That guy was, like, yeah, yeah. As wow. somebody who used to work at a bar. I'm learning a lot tonight. Dude, as somebody who. White people to... felt so bad. That's you were like stumbling. Yeah, you were blacked out, dude. Yeah. yeah. As somebody who used to work at a bar, I wish that some moron from a podcast who made an undeservedly high income came in and thought I was homeless and, you know. Yeah, selling like PBR and t-shirts. Yeah. To uh. a, an event that really went south. Dude, that night that night was uh that was so funny. Yeah, I can't believe he was the president. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I still sometimes I'm like, LOL. oh yeah. <laughs> LOL, dude. I I've he's like so polluted. I mean, like Twitter is now all about Trump and like he's so polluted my subconscious. Like I he he's he's just part of me. I have dreams about him now. <laughs> I literally oh, no, there's an article about that that Catherine Lou wrote because all of these people were having dreams about Donald Trump. I have dreams it's about like him Cthulhu. like once a week. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, she's like he, a Marxist Freudian and she's like, This is a manifestation of your anxiety. He has yeah. come to represent every threat. Well, exactly. Because or something like that. His, I kind of skipped his, it. It was a little He smart. is the rough beast slouching towards Bethlehem. He is an apocalyptic figure in, in some sense. Maybe not like apocalypse, but like he is a, a era defined. A new era has dawned with his emergence. Like there, you can't. He's a you, fat diapered horseman. Country. Yeah, he's a fat diapered orange horseman. We cannot. So like that kind of trauma of like seeing history get broken in front of you like seeing a tear in reality as you understood it just open up in front of you that's just going to create some serious psychic trauma yeah that is then going to be expressed <laughs> through just this constant like it's like suddenly learning it'll, it's it'll like suddenly learning so intense that you won't remember it and it'll be described to you months later on a I, podcast. Say, I, <laughs> fucking, I remember when we got back because i got back to my place after that i remember throwing that sandwich we got uh, in the garbage when i got out of the cab dunking I'm sorry, <laughs> but I like brought it with me, and I had it in the car, and I had a conversation with my driver. We were like, "Did you fucking believe this?" And I'm like, "No, dude, I can't fucking believe this." And I got out of the thing, and I'm like walking towards. I'm like, "I can't eat this," and I just fucking threw it in a pile wow, of trash. Well, that's I, I had a, I, I'm I'm sorry. I had I'm a, sorry, but I don't remember this thing at the end of the. Oh my pile god, of the bar. I remember like put like you kind of like leaning against a tree, but the tree was more of a sapling. So like you, <laughs> well, I'm like he's gonna fall in the mulch. Let's stand over here. So you put your arm around me, and I remember thinking, I am actually not physically big enough to hold him up. Yeah. Like if he takes a hard fall. And then I think Nick intervened and like picked up the other side, and we sort of. Fuck, I Matt, don't Matt, I would I would have carried you like in an officer and a gentleman if you asked. <laughs> no, and like in the bodyguard. This yeah, is caring, because he, he, he's the troubled artist. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, I was thinking yeah, he's he's I'm definitely he, not anyone. I don't work at a fucking factory. That's for sure. No. The, the next day after that, like I did the nostalgia trap with David Parsons. Shout outs out to uh, David Parsons, uh, and. My cab driver. This is a very Thomas Friedman moment. <laughs> my yeah. cab driver. But there really are like. They really is. Him, yeah. It's you have really wonderful conversations with cab drivers. Dude, the last cab driver that took me to LaGuardia was a Lebanese Shia, and we talked about how uh, 
uh, <laughs> Saad Hariri is actually the late King Abdullah's cuck baby. But anyway. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> what? What? I Nobody wanted... cares about these characters from the Phantom Pain. <laughs> uh, I have we one haven't th- all read Dune. I have one I thing it. that I know about, and you're going to let me talk about it. But no. So this guy was a like uh, ethnic Russian from Ukraine. And he, he smashed a risk board. He was like, he was like, uh, well, no, he's an ally to me, <laughs> but uh, he was like, you know, yeah, Trump's kind of a shithead, but Hillary was going to give weapons to all these Banderas. And it was like kind of interesting. It was kind of interesting to hear that perspective on it. But then also, <laughs> what? I, what is the point of this story? I don't know. You didn't need the even point smoke is it. that you have no excuse. Two countries my, with cut McDonald's. His mic off. Cut his mic off. <laughs> two countries with McDonald's have never gone to war with each other. That's the point. <laughs> Actually, that that rule That's was broken the point. in two thousand eight. The Georgian Russian War. Yeah. Both have fucking McDonald's. So, so retire, s- bitch. Tom Friedman, retire, bitch. You can blame Perestroika for that. There's yeah. another uh, Tom Friedman who's an artist who my, I, my, a friend of a friend was an artist assistant for. And I was like, uh, I was at a wedding. I was drunk and I was like, can you explain like what the other Tom Friedman's art is like? He's like, yeah, he's like a. Uh, one of his pieces is like really powerful. It's like a, a bar of soap, and he like takes his pubes and he makes concentric circles on the bar of soap. It's really powerful. <laughs> and I was like, I think he's, I think he's the better Thomas Friedman. I do think. I yeah, do that think. rules. That's valuable. That's actually the title of Friedman's next book, uh, Pube Dove. <laughs> Pube how soap. how uh, the eradication of crabs. Uh, <laughs> Are all uh, reinventing globalization. <laughs> I did. I, there was one thing I did because I can't talk about this on Come Town. And you know, you guys are my my boys. I could be a little bit more emotional I'm not with. You know? <laughs> you know, I'm not a boy. I'm get, you're my boy, though. You know. <laughs> all right, fine. But you guys do know that I was like a you know an indoctrinated Zionist youth, right? You do know that I like, lived in. You're you. I'm. Uh, I have no. to go. You were you were you're a foreign middle class. Cut Felix is no, off I, right now. I did a year gap year before college in Israel as uh you know it was my Zionist uh, calling and uh, you know I do think that this would be probably a good platform for me to talk shit on uh, <laughs> <laughs> on that experience. Yeah, let's hear it. Lay, right? lay it on the line, yeah. dude. What was it like? By the way, oh, we man, don't it was terrible. A seventeen-year-old, from your context, to uh, necessarily yeah, have yeah. the best politics on Israel. Yeah, well, yeah, well, you were seventeen. I was, are no, no, I, was, yeah, I turned nineteen. Though. It was, it was like okay. would have been my freshman year. So I took classes and then I worked on an ambulance like half the year. But um, I remember there was like this. So you know, I was like pretty fervent Zionist. But like, also, I like went to Zionist summer camp. But like, the reason I sort of thought I, I think I got into it. In retrospect, was that I was getting like, like BJ's, hand J's, <laughs> like from like girls from New Jersey, and no one in my public high school in Las Vegas wanted to like suck my dick. So I was just like, well, that must mean that Israel is like really <laughs> they have a, they have like a right to like uh, build a wall. <laughs> well, like that's the number. That's, Honestly, that's the theory behind birthright, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Horny yeah. kids to come here and seriously, get laid. that would yeah. work on me. That would work. Dude, 100%. seriously, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got really I mean, involved. Not me because I I had sex, but. I understand. Especially well, I had for sex. I lost my Virginia Zion in summer camp. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. It was by design. Yeah. I mean, it's all by design. When, when you're on birthright and a girl with braces sucks your dick, it's called the Iron Dome. Yeah. yeah. You guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm looking at this uh, pube soap. It's actually very cool. It is powerful. Yeah. It's, I looked it up too. It's pretty cool. art. It's yeah, Tom very Friedman. Friedman. You're Tom Friedman. Yeah, yeah. He's the better Tom the Friedman. Better Tom this Friedman. is clearly Yo, the superior. Check that shit That's out. a very no placid question. image. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's better than whatever. every, every page he's <laughs> ever written. Uh, so, uh, it's not sports. So they sent us. <laughs> so like the summer before I went to Israel, they sent us to um, uh, like we did like a Jewish leadership program. And they sent us to Capitol Hill to teach us how to lobby our our members of Congress. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, re- by the way, Adam, I hope none of the Come Town fans listen to this episode. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. I actually I brought this up at the last Funny Moms, but it was it was fun. I mean, whatever. It, there's a little overlap, but um, I'm from Nevada, so they set everyone up with our Congress people, and uh, fucking Harry Reid agreed to meet with me and my friends Alex and Tommy. 
uh, in his <laughs> office. And so they like give us all the talking points. They're like, this is why it's important to build. It's not a wall. It's a security fence. <laughs> and this is why it's important to protect Israel. No matter what. My name is Adam Friedland. I'm 16 years old. And I j- I'm desperately trying to get this girl, Becky Kaplan, to touch my dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah I remember like going to the fucking Senate building because uh, what was look, Harry Reid like he's tall he's taller than you think um, he was a boxer uh, I think that we were song just talking about Simon Harry Reed and Garfunkel night. song was was about uh, Harry Reid <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he was no. also the inspiration for the Tommy Smothers character in, in Casino, Casino. Yes. But, uh, when I comped you Mr. G- Mr. Senator, Mr. You, State you're, Senator, you're, you're, you're you're milling around. But he was actually the opposite of that character because that character gets bribed a lot, and you know Ace goes off off on him. But the real Harry Reid, this undercover informant, tried to bribe him, and Reid just started choking him, and these agents had to run into. The <laughs> yeah, room. I heard Harry that. Reid's Harry Reid's actually a very interesting backstory. Like his mother uh, was like changing sheets in hotels. He like came from nothing. He was born in this like middle of nowhere, like from a fucking like. Uh, western kind of town the called Mormons, right? searchlight yeah searchlight nevada and he's mormon and i think he married a jewish girl he made her convert which my parents not very that's <laughs> not okay with that uh but uh, and her entire bloodline yeah of yeah but i met with him in his Quick office sidebar warren zivon the only other half jew half mormon <laughs> uh no 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 that's Clearly not true superior. i'm about yeah. to drop some fucking knowledge on you guys uh roseanne barr Half Jew, oh, that's oh. right. Yeah, what yeah. Is, uh, it's and I think two incredibly powerful. I think lines. Chelsea Handler too. She's really a, is also half Jew, half Mormon. Maybe I'm wrong. Someone look that up. I mean, um, Mormons are like. And like Larry a, King's weird, wife like, is Mormon. Yeah. Roseanne's like a weird like uh, Eurasian Jew too, because I remember like looking up. Yeah. Sh- oh, Belarusian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was it. I'm Belarus. I'm a quarter Belarusian, three quarters Lithuanian. All right, it doesn't matter. That's you wear what? Anyway, I just remember who else is half Mormon, half Jew? Belladonna. Oh yeah, the porn star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that Way true? More than I would expect. <laughs> I, I, I uh... thank you, thank but, you. Yeah. I don't know. Somehow that combo creates uh, Is some, funny? some really smart stand-up <laughs> comedy. Maybe there's something to that combination. Yeah, I haven't I, seen I her stand up. Mormons a lot. They're, uh, they're. I grew up with a ton of them in Vegas. They're fuck. I no, they're fucked that. up they're and they're out. they're creepy, but they're also like. E- they're everything evangelicals pretend to be. Well, I mean, evangelicals, yes, they're successful. They, uh, evangelicals are like, I'm successful. My secondhand boating supply business only loses three hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, I have a great marriage, except for the twenty times a year that I go on a rampage of fellatio and fucking other men and smoking meth. My kids love me. The two months out of the year that I'm allowed to see them, I'm just a man of God. Uh, by the way, I'm also selling male bracelets on Etsy. <laughs> Uh, I needed to raise money. The judge is making me pay for my own breathalyzer on the car. But uh, also, I think I should be able to tell everyone what to do all the fucking time. I'm a pagan fucking idiot. Piece of shit. Go Trump. But anyway... But anyway, <laughs> Mormons that actually. Was good. Speaking of secondhand boating supplies, the other on some episode, I heard you uh, admonish the noble ski Which, what? by the way... <laughs> Those things rule, and I want you to take it back right now. I don't. I don't remember. Instead of uh, you, you said that the, the, the MAGA chuds uh, were ski do owners. Yeah, and that's I, true. Okay, I'm not taking that back. Rule. This is not. This is not really that related. But I just watched that scene in Eastbound and Down, yes. where he's at rock bottom and he's on this. <laughs> he's on the ski do in his jeans. <laughs> he's wearing jeans on the ski do and he runs out. Of, yeah, my of dad gas. used to do that. He runs he out of gas. <laughs> my dad used to do that. Way. Stop it. <laughs> he just walks up. <laughs> He would wear jorts on the ski do because he didn't have real trunks and his mullet would be waving in the wind. Uh, so the Mormons and are... This was the ski do he bought with money he probably really should have been playing child well, support reason... on. But in my opinion, at least I got to enjoy the ski do so it could be worse. Ski could do... be frittering it all away. Yeah, ski do is like... What most evangelicals spend their money on is like, oh, I'm going to build a fifty thousand dollar recording studio so I can record my Christian EDM yes. track called no. "You Give Me Energy." <laughs> it's a blight on, it's a blight on nature. They're probably horribly polluted. They're disgusting. They're so fucking fun. 
They rule. They're my this is the thing that the, this is the thing where the maggot shuds are right. Me and my me and my family took the uh, whole trip a on ski doos around the island of Key West, and it was the best family vacation ever. Love yeah. you, mom. Love you, mom and dad. Love you, Lizzie. But like, okay, so more. Yeah, Hemingway are used to do that when he was in Key West. <laughs> he would <laughs> shot sharks on the ski. Yeah, he'd have like, three cats on the ski doo. <laughs> and he'd have just. A Gun that he'd use to shoot yeah. sharks from the ski. Yeah, he'd hold the gun barrel first in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> As he but he had a great time. Yeah, he had a great time. I mean, time. yes, okay, Mormons are su- more successful I'm glad he killed himself, by the way. than evangelicals. Their families the are more cake. stable. They don't get divorced all the time. You know, they actually are what evangelicals I claim love- to want to be. But they also, when things get a little too much pressure, declare themselves prophets and start polygamous communes in the desert. Okay, okay. Uh, I have, Who I, I, I have, I, okay, really? Matthew Christman of German Heritage? <laughs> Listen, anyone who comes from Anglo-Saxon or really most types of the, you know, like... Ooh, don't do it to them. R- First of all, Bavarians <laughs> are POC. That's right. That's true. We're That's the right. swarthy Catholics of but the Prussian Empire. Most white people, if you go back only three generations they have at least two family members two great great uncles who went insane and thought that they were christ so at least when the mormons do it they build an entire community about it whereas when the regular protestants do it they're just an asshole it's in not their a real well, do you know about though, it's an astroturf community it's like disney does community except like you bash gay people instead of them all working Who, the mormons? i'm not saying i condone their actions i'm just i respect their initiative yeah it, well i mean they do they do love multi-level marketing and that's the reason because it the, it's the religion itself is a multi-level but marketing there's scheme. such a there's such a like a a, a, a genre of ex Mormonism that they're clearly like Jack like Mormons, hem- Jack Mormons, yeah. They, they're clearly like hemorrhaging people. Uh, well, no, they for, until recently no. anyway. They're incredibly. They're one of the fastest growing religions in the world. A lot of their it's but true. that doesn't mean growth, they're not hemorrhaging people. It just means they're evangelizing. That, that's true, and they're evangelizing in like Africa, that's, mm-hmm. which is weird since they didn't think black people were fully human until the fucking seventies. Yeah, people, yeah, people, everyone has a pre woke period, but okay. Let me let me put it this way. Yeah, old if you ever old, check out. Brigham Young's tweets, problematic. Yeah. Listen, listen. A lot of people drop out of Mormonism. A lot of people stay in evangelical Christianity. Well, yeah, you know what? It's easy to get a black belt in Taekwondo. It's a little bit harder to get one in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went to Temple Square. Uh, Me too. I yeah. went to a debate tournament in Salt Lake City when I was in high school. When I was not getting <laughs> any head. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so creepy because it feels like Disneyland's version of religion. It's weird. It, it's it, weird. It, it, it feels totally airsats. It feels totally just like fabricated. And you, because you can't go into the temple unless you're a Mormon. Right. You have to have your, your temple card. Uh, so, but they have this big museum next to it. Yeah. And like the, the big culminating thing is you go up a spiral staircase or, or style incline like a Guggenheim kind of. And there's a big painting of the, the night sky and you get in the middle of it and it's this big circular room and all the walls are painted like the stars and then earth and then Kolob and then a big statue of Christ in the middle of it and it just feels real yeah. fake well as far as like people that believe that when they die they're going to inherit a planet that the, they're, they're going to rule over with their you know 75 kids and their wife you know as far as as, as those type of people go they're, they're chill as fuck actually like in Vegas there were so there were it's a ton true, of Mormons expect them to be worse because Howard Hughes yeah uh uh, Iron Bob Mayhew, yeah. The Howard Hughes Corporation, when he was like losing his mind, only trusted Mormons. So he only hired Mormons. So there's that in seems Vegas, like it could end up like an Altamont situation, though. Like they could co- that could totally like, backfire. Well, no, I mean they well, were he like, was like the best workers, insane, and it, uh, trusted Mormons because they were incredibly, in his view, pure and clean. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, like they had it's clean like blood. how people in the Midwest love to hire the Amish to frame their house. I used for to like jack off. Times the price. <laughs> I used to jack off so furious though to the moms because like they had this like sort of almost repressed but they were like bursting with this sexual energy <laughs> and my friend brad's mom i used to fucking just murder my dick whenever, <laughs> I, whenever i'd come home from well I, i'll say this out at his house i i went to i drove through colorado city arizona once which is one of the big ones the one warren jeffs used to lead oh yeah uh and it the houses are these giant like improvised buildings with like a bunch of drywalled additions all the and they're all on a hill of dirt with no grass and they all have really really tall walls well they've been excommunicated those guys but like i saw one of the ladies and she was there with her little children of the corn kids 
And she was wearing that outfit that I saw them when they were arranging the, prairie the people, the prairie dress yeah. and the hair. And it's like, that would kill my boner. And I mean, I would <laughs> never, I would need like at least 12 wives to make up for those yeah. just horrifyingly unappealing <laughs> fashion choices. Um, disagree. <laughs> the regular uh, moms would the, wear like Hollister and stuff and be hot and be all be like 31 years old. What is and hot? like. Yeah, right. Yeah, because they, yeah, they, just they started spawning at yeah, like they 13. Blonde. They look like hot high school girls, but they were moms. It, to, uh, to slightly redirect to uh, Adam's teenage horniness, I, I do want to come back around to your uh, your teenage Zionism oh, as a yeah. result of uh, being horny and how it totally oh, paid off in getting beige, beiges and hand jobs. From, it did pay off, but then but like, I lost so, it. So how did you lose it then? Okay, You just got there started getting laid moments. regularly and you're like... The, the I novelty don't of that went away anymore. and you were like, there holy were shit, moments. this is objectifyingly terrifying. There were two moments. One was at the end of my year in Israel, they had a campus activism seminar, right? And there was this British uh, guy who made Aliyah, who was like one of the leaders of the program. It was Sam Chris. Stu- <laughs> <laughs> sort of. There were, my my uh, program was half British, half American. Um, and they're all from North London and they all live in like this like a two uh, block radius. It's like a shit in sh- Jerusalem, mate. Yeah, yeah. It's We're a built a bloody Tesco next to the temple. <laughs> they're all Tories and they're all fucking like repugnant and they flat ironed their hair and they all had Euro mullets. But um, <laughs> uh, these dudes. OK, so anyway, this dude stands up and he's like, next year you are going to war. You are going to the United States Canadian and British college campus. On these college campuses, there is a war between Israel and Palestine (laughs) that you are going to have to undertake. All right, let's get some ideas. How are we going to make people like Israel? (laughs) Okay, all right, shoot. Here's one idea, all right? When it's Sukkot, when it's Sukkot, you you sit in the quad of your college and you make a Sukkot and you smoke hookah. You do hookah in the sukkah. <laughs> and when people, when people ask you what's going on, you say, well, in Israel, it's cool that people smoke hookah. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> the fuck did They're you like, say? The, pal- the, pal- the Palestinian campus activists are going to spread lies. They're going to say that Israel is killing the Palestinians. <laughs> They're going to say that Israel is brutal. And they're going to say that I was like, uh, yeah, okay, they are. Like, I mean, they're doing all that. And then they, there was one weekend where they took us to the settlements, and that was when I really lost it. Talk about like, insular, weird religious yeah. communities. Yeah. yeah. So we went to the settlements, and they were like, you know, you're just there, and it's like all tracked housing. It's like it looks like Vegas. It looks like where I grew up. It's all like fucking like cookie cutter, like you know, tr- it it looks like a uh, fucking Arrested Development. You know, like it's like track <laughs> model homes. homes. Yeah, yeah, and. They're like, yeah, just look down the road. That's like a Palestinian village. And they're, you know, they're like, yeah, you know, we like uh, we got to protect ourselves. And they had like uh, fucking guards and they're all fucking like uh, religious psychopaths. And I went there right after the disengagement from Gaza. And um, they had, you know, the the settlers in Gaza, there was like maybe there's so there's so much fewer settlers in Gaza than there are on the West Bank. That was so that was like the first step of Sharon getting woke. And being like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna make everyone leave Gaza, and then next step, I'm gonna make everyone leave the West Bank. But then he had a fucking stroke. But uh, uh, the butcher of Sabra and Shatila, by the way. Um, but yeah, and I, I remember I was in the 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 settlements, and I was like, I, I feel like I'm in a fucking stolen car right now. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, they were like, you need to get inside. We need to get inside. And we're like, what's going on? And they made us go inside this like fucking rec center they had, and they were like, "There's a there's a riot <laughs> in in the village, like the Palestinian village, like right down the road, and we think there's a terrorist loose, and like we were all like hiding in this fucking rec center, and I remember there's like this like guard they had with us, and he had a fucking gun, and I was like, "What the fuck am I doing here right now? <laughs> I'm fucking 19 years old. <laughs> Why did my parents agree to do this?" <laughs> I got, <laughs> I paid for a blowjob from a Russian sex worker that was <laughs> <laughs> fucking sex trafficked here with my fucking meal stipend money and then, <laughs> and then forgot the rest, the envelope of meal stipend for the month in the strip club and had to starve for a month where I ate a shawarma every day at 5 p.m. to survive. That's what I did. Anyway. How, how, yeah. was, the, how was the beach though? I got a, it was a condom blowjob 
from a, uh, <laughs> from a from a woman that was a uh, uh, had braces <laughs> and oh fake God. breasts. And I, I remember this was the first time I felt fake boobs. And I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> These are the hardest. At 19 heaviest. years old, you were picky. I, I just remember feeling them. I'm like, this is horrible. And I, I know my, that my dad, when we're in like s- supermarkets and stuff or restaurants, he'll like look at a woman with fake breasts and be like, that's nice. And I'm like, well, you've just never felt them. <laughs> you've never felt them before. Yeah, it was just like wholly inappropriate that I was sent there for a year. And, and then I left and then I went to college and then I studied Middle Eastern politics and then they told us about all the shit that we weren't told about, like the Tokhni Dal and the, eth- the ethnic cleansing and during the 1948 war. And it's just like, okay, I was on a fucking propaganda trip. Um, and yeah, so that's... I mean, I went to, I went to college in D.C. because I was like really into politics in high school. And then like within a week of being there, I was just like... Um, you, know, you know how when you get to college there's always that first guy that's like running for something? It's like the floor that the like... Uh, the representative for your floor there's like yeah, some RA or the, something yeah well like the first he's like yeah i'm gonna make this semester the best semester ever <laughs> like my name is tim and i'm running for f- floor representative for the seventh floor we're gonna fucking kill it this year <laughs> and i'm just like what the fuck are you running for and it's always those guys that are the ones that like get internships on the hill and then go into politics and they're always the worst fucking people in the world so i fucking lost zionism you know from going to israel and I, love, I, lost I love those grotesque like british tories who tried to give you like their patent speech <laughs> about going to college and you surrendered immediately <laughs> <laughs> well i did some like spy work for the um for the palestinian uh campus activists like i uh sat yeah, in on hillel double agent i sat in on hillel <laughs> meetings <laughs> and like told them and then I told the Palestinian kids about like what their plans were to like protest like anti Israel speakers and stuff. I was I was like a double I was like fucking James Bond, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Triple parentheses seven. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but of course the real question is, did that get you laid? No, I I didn't really get laid. Um I mean, I got laid all okay, like I had girlfriends, but then I kind of mostly got laid in the last like two and a half, three years of my life after I moved here, and it was like weird. Be- I, I mean, I have like a, jo- I talk about this in stand up, but like there are enough girls in New York that have seen like Annie Hall that think it's like acceptable to have <laughs> sex with a disgusting, spindly, <laughs> rumple stillskin like Jewish creature. <laughs> And so, so then, like, I moved here, and then I was like, girls were having sex with me finally, and it was, I can't, I just can't live anywhere else. I have to live here for the rest of my life. I'm <laughs> fucked um, because I don't know. But yeah, yeah. So I, t- I took a, uh, I took, I got like bl- blowjobs in Zionist uh, indoctrination camps, and then uh, I took a break uh, for like f- five years until I was like 27 years old. <laughs> <laughs> the Jewish people, they take something bad in, with camps and turn it into something <laughs> great. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Wow, this it's is going like from the absolute worst camp in the world to the absolute best. <laughs> the blowjob camp. <laughs> camp blowjob. <laughs> but I, 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 d- I did, if it's okay with uh, the, the rest of the gang, uh, having, having Adam on, I do want to talk with Adam for the first time on the show because I feel like he's a minor figure in, in the show Mythos that like I don't think we've ever fully explored. But can we talk about my boy Pop? Oh, we talk, oh we talk about King Pop. He's he's out. He's so bored right now. I don't know if you've been following his Snapchat. <laughs> he's lost wait, some we, weight. We should give. We wait, should wait give a so he background. did not do ten years. Obviously, yeah. we should do back. Yeah, oh, we yeah should okay. Do, so Adam, could you could you lay out like who is Popcorn <laughs> and why is he of interest to us? Well, because well, it was before I knew you, Nick sent me this Instagram of this kid from Kentucky. Who's like a, an obese high school student? <laughs> he's like an Eric Cartman looking like he white looks kid. Like, yeah. He's got like, like curly blonde he hair, like, he is like but he's IRL like a big Cartman. fat That's like perfect. white kid. He's yeah. cherubic white trash. Who, who, ro- who he's rocks like, like he's, true, he's, true yeah. religion jeans? Um, so you know we and you know he plays fast and loose with the n word. Soft A, uh, soft A. <laughs> um, and then you know I went kind of deep into pop and I found out that. He has a black stepdad and half black uh, siblings, so maybe that m- influenced uh, him thinking it's okay to He's say that word. But Johnson, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> so I evangelized popcorn because I I thought this is before I knew Will, and yeah. you found it and you s- 
I think I showed Nick. Nick, yeah. And then Nick showed it to me, and then I showed like a billion people. Anyway, like, uh, and you know, his his social he's like, media. His presence, Instagram style is, is so amazing, though, because he's like, I don't know, what was he, 15 then? Something like that. And it's just like, it, all, it's just all his feed is just him just smoking blunts, like, comment off that gas. They mad, though. It's amazing. Like, making He's out like with, like, Doom hot Apple women. <laughs> yeah, that girl, school. his girlfriend is hot. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that text exchange that he posted, which was, like, his girlfriend being, like, um, d- you know, like, he's, like, I... P- he like texts her. He's like, "I promise, I will never cheat on you again." And she's like, "As long as you promise, one hundred and, like, <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, I love you, baby." And she's like, "I love you too." And he's like, "He's like one hundred. We're gonna stay together forever." Like <laughs> this is true love. And it's like, and she's she. I don't. I don't know. Like the, he was. He was the. He, you know, he was a, a boy that we followed. A group of people in New York were following on social media because we yeah. thought he was funny, and he was uh, team follow back. He would follow you back. <laughs> Because he, he was a real savage, and you know, <laughs> if you follow a savage, he'll ref- he, he'll follow you back. <laughs> and um, and then he had a post one day that's like, well, he didn't post for like a couple weeks, and then he's like, yo, it just got out the 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 clink or whatever. It just got out the the. The Huskow, Bing. <laughs> he's a, he's a total rapper, <laughs> rap king, but he also uses old timey uh, slang yeah. from the thirties. I just got out the clank. Uh, <laughs> he's and he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm about to go to jail for ten years. <laughs> And I was like, I remember seeing this and thinking, is this for real? Like, is this all just been an elaborate prank? Because I thought he was just like, he was acting like he was a criminal, but he was just a boy that was just trying to be like a rapper. Yeah. So then I DM'd him. Yeah, well, that's generally how it starts. Wait, I can find the DMs, but I DM'd him and I was like, I was like, popcorn, like. (laughs) (laughs) I'm worried. I was like, popcorn, where are you? Is it true you're going to jail? Let, let me find Wait, it. Wait, while, while Adam's finding the DMs... He, my, he's I, like this very charismatic personality. Yeah, he's got swag for days. Yeah. Like, he really does. And my, like, my favorite... Like, he would just post a lot of videos, too. And they would just be him, like, you know, rapping to, like, G Erbo or, like, Bobby Schmurder and, like, just smoking blunts and just being like... Oh, he's a terrible rapper. Yeah, gas, yeah. And then he raps himself, like, his boys make beats, and he's like... This like yeah he like he does his own rap shit but my favorite favorite popcorn video it's lost forever now unfortunately are just him and his friends standing in a barn Dang. smoking <laughs> weed and it's raining outside and they're just waiting for it to stop raining so they can smoke weed somewhere else <laughs> and just popcorn's putting the camera out and just says gang shit gang <laughs> shit <laughs> yeah that to the, me <laughs> was so beautiful and then there was like an adult that they were hanging out it was all boys and then one of them is an adult and he like turns the camera to the adult and he immediately puts his hand over his face like come on popcorn stop putting me in your stupid videos anyway yeah i found the dm so i was like hi popcorn are you really going to jail on wednesday for 10 years and he's like yeah i have to do two years out of 10 to get parole but I'll probably do four. And I was like, damn, dude, sorry to hear that. What happened? He's like, me and my dude (laughs) did a home invasion with a handgun and went went on a high-speed chase with the police because we was in a stolen car. So much illegal that's stuff. So, that's so that's bad. The, that's that's so astounding bad. amount of illegal so, activity. Like he, okay, so, like, so much going he's on. He's so bad. He's bad, a bad man. boy. <laughs> he's like, but he's like seventeen. He's like doing felonies at like a twenty-eight year old level. Well, the only, thank God he got arrested when he was still seventeen. Because if he had been, I really like, yeah. Had he gone to adult prison, popcorn yeah, would have gotten honestly, got you alive. I didn't believe it, but I kind of believed that he was doing all those things. Yeah, I think definitely. He was sixteen. Yeah, he was sixteen. So thank God. So basically, so he uh, spent what two? Years? It's, yeah, it's it's not a joke. He did do two years, and I I don't know what kind of facility, but he was locked up for two years, and he's just gotten out. And like you know, Adam was the first person to text me. He was like, "Yo, pops out." <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's on Snap. He's on the Snap. He's on the right Snap. Now. You gotta follow. <laughs> yeah. You gotta follow a savage, dude. <laughs> yeah, follow a savage. So yeah, just I don't know. Like he. Uh, 
just his his impish, youthful uh, joy and antics. vigor and antics. Uh, just in, felonies. In, in felony <laughs> charges. <laughs> well, then I said, it are you abuse me with like I just it, it it cheers me up. He's so bored now because like he can't smoke gas on the on Snap or on Instagram <laughs> anymore. So hopefully, which was ninety percent of what he was doing before. Yeah, there were so hopefully a lot of he's... great great weed shots. That's the thing that I remember. He yeah. could really was showcase that. the marijuana. There was that, and then the one right after he got beat up when he did the mirror video and he was like yeah it just got jumped to date <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i'm gonna see you out there on these streets <laughs> and he's like literally has a black eye <laughs> and oh he never cut his fingernails he had long terrible disgusting fingernails <laughs> anyway after he told me what he did i said man i'm sorry popcorn are you doing okay and then he did not answer a soft yeah, ass <laughs> Like ruin the moment a with like this like intimate that. gay. <laughs> and then I was how like, "How are you feeling about this?" And then I was like, uh, "And then I, a couple hours later, I was like, can you have instant in jail?'" And then he said, "No, you can't." And I was like, "Stay strong, pop." <laughs> I just came up with an idea. The way that Israel look, Zionism is a cancer on this world. <laughs> uh, no one in my family has ever been Zionist. We're actually we're not Zionist because I was told from a young age that Israel's Israelis are just the most unpleasant fucking people in the world. I think that's why but, my parents are Zionists because they hate it when they move here because they're just so disgusting. They're rude. awful. They're awful. They have no manners. But uh, anyway, look so. You know, the population transfer that's occurred in the last few years, you know, that was sort of the real, real thing behind uh, Jonathan Pollard was getting all these people who weren't really Jews sent from Russia to, like, fight Arab birth rates in Israel. Yeah. But, you know, so they're always lowering standards because, you Mm -hmm. know, they can't... Because of demographics. Demographics, right. But it's like, there's no such thing as really half a Jew if you're going by that definition. So... They should take kids like popcorn (laughs) and send them to Israel. (laughs) Put them in the IDF. Yeah, you can smoke that gas, but you have to like you have to be a part of something. Popcorn. You have to be a Golani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh hell yeah! That takes care of our delinquents. It teaches them respect, a schedule. uh, You know, being part of something bigger. You would get another version of Modest Yahoo. Yeah, you know, and he would be, he would kill it at the online Hasbara. Oh my God, he'd be saying, yo, yo, Goofy, you you try to call this an apartheid state? How come my boy is Drews? (laughs) (laughs) Yo, yo, Ali Abunima, you you mad AF? Because I'm off that weed pussy getting this money while you you mad as fuck, B. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. Hezbollah are complete haters. I yeah I mean I, Jesus Christ that would be so funny the Russians in Israel are hilarious I re- I was on a bus once and there was this kid that was like just had like uh, fingerless gloves and um, this like disgusting greasy haircut and he looks at me and goes um, eh, let me ask you a question <laughs> and I was like all right what what's up dude and he's like are you a metalist and I was like a metalist like. Like, can I like work with metals? <laughs> and he's like, no. Do you like uh, Metallica, Megadeth? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the Russians, the Russians that they brought over, they're kind of like the teacots of Israel. Oh yeah, like they really are. Uh, they become uh, a Vigdor Lieberman. A Vig- yeah, yeah, a Vigdor yeah. Lieberman is like. I mean, everyone there, like everything there, everything is like a teacup meme. It's not really a teacup meme. It's like if Richard Spencer got to run a country. But <laughs> uh, Victor Lieberman is like the sheriff David Lee Clark. <laughs> yes. that place. Yeah, yeah, that's a great analog. He was he was also a bouncer, and he got into politics because he beat the shit out of a child, and then his like neighbor who is in politics like got him out of the charge, and he's like, wow. You really can use this to help people. <laughs> <laughs> what a great country! What my an amazing one, place. My favorite one is the um, the Nazi uh, woman Ayelet Shaked. Yeah, oh God. who's Don. like I still would. Don. Yo, dude, I still dude, would. Dude, on, uh, <laughs> I, in the uh, Israeli version of Chapo and Comtown after Netanyahu won in 2015, <laughs> the, uh, um, the Israeli version of me and the Israeli version of you, I was like, I don't know, man. There's some like good rising stars that could beat Likud. Like, <laughs> 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 
I still would though. <laughs> 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 no question. What a, what a perfect place to to wrap things up now that we've come full circle. Oh yeah, thank you that, for that having me. That is an me. excellent uh, a bow. Can I do a plug? Yeah, for, absolutely. Go for it. The Come Boys are taking over at Caroline's Comedy Club, Ooh, ladies hello. and gentlemen, February twenty first. So uh, if you're in New York, you should come see us at Caroline's. Right, Nick? I- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. Yeah, Will is going to be there, and then if he, and then we're going to have another show in Brooklyn a week after that. But Caroline's, we that we want to get a strong uh, show in, showing for that. Yeah, all Caroline's com- would be dope. But also, uh, if you haven't checked out uh, Funny Moms yet in Brooklyn, yeah, uh, definitely yeah. come out to that. That's Wait, they're a lot of fun. Should we start talking? Should we start plugging the dollop show? That's in April. That's but in yeah, April. Well, I mean, shit, might as well just say now. Uh, Matt is going to be we're the, the dollop live on the road. Yeah, in Detroit. Matt's going to be the guest in Detroit. I think that's like the 27th or something. What and, is that? The and, dollop. Uh, Dave Anthony's uh, podcast. Dave oh, Anthony's okay, history cool. podcast. It's yeah, and uh, Felix and I are going to be the guests uh, in New York at the Highline Ballroom, I yeah. think, uh, in April. So Dave Anthony's best friends with Mark Marin, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I won't. <laughs> I won't. I won't. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that, Adam. But uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, Chapo and Dollop live in Detroit and New York, and mm-hmm. come town at come Caroline's town February twenty first. Yeah, and then we and then the fourth Monday of every month we do a show in Brooklyn. Me and Sav and Nick at a place called Come On Everybody, called Funny Moms. that have been pretty cool. The last and couple uh, months. Come On Everybody's name takes on a different meaning when come town shows up. right yeah we we take it over we change the sign we put a we put our own sign up and uh we fuck we really fuck shit up <laughs> that's what that's what we're all about <laughs> and if you guys you know whatever the thanks thanks for having me adam thanks for yeah, coming yeah, on the show pleasure. it was, yeah, it was show. awesome to talk to you man all right until next time everybody Bye-bye. bye bye cheers